Okay, so I have just received something quite interesting from Japan. These are soil samples and here I've got my little pancake Geiger Miller counter and good old CDV 700 which I'll put on now on the times one scale. For now I'm just putting the pancake right next to these unknown soil samples. Let me see. Sometimes up to 100, sometimes around 50. Now I'm placing this onto the soil samples. As you can see, it was on a scale up to 100 otherwise. And now it's, well, reaching 200 and stuff. I'd say there's definitely something in this soil which has been taken near Tokyo. It's not from Fukushima, it's from Tokyo. And we're going to put that into a high purity germanium detector to get a nice gamma spectrum and see what's going on with this stuff. So here you can see the detector itself, the high purity germanium crystal, which is underneath all that cover, cooled with liquid nitrogen. Let's see what happens. And yep, we're getting a lot of blinking lights. That means quite a lot of activity, or more like gamma rays, hitting the actual crystal. Let's see what our spectrum says. This is the actual live view of the spectrum coming up. You can see on each channel there are incoming pulses, or on almost any channels. You can already make out a few of those peaks that stand out above all the others. Those are the gamma lines that actually belong to cesium-137 and cesium-134, which are very common to be around after catastrophes in nuclear reactors and are not naturally occurring isotopes. They are clearly man-made isotopes that come from nuclear reactors. And you can see they stand out a lot. So this is significant. This is quite a significant find. Speeding things up, you can actually see how more lines are coming up. Uh, this was actually just a 30 minutes analysis, but we had the sample analyzed for a full 24 hours, and all we could see on the gamma spectrometer was the lines that belong to cesium-134 and cesium-137. Now let's have a look at the peaks. We can see that this peak here is responsible for cesium-134. And we're just browsing through the peaks, see what the analyzing software says. It says season 137 here, with an activity of 550 bicarol, or 0.55 kilo bicarol. But uh, it is important to note that, that this was actually uh, done with the calibration, geometry calibration for a point source. So it can be quite inaccurate, maybe up to 50% inaccurate as we do not have the proper geometry calibration for this yet. But, well, we get significant peaks, but don't take the activity, the stated activity, for granted. We can also zoom in on the spectrum to have a look at the smaller peaks here. The stuff on the left side is due to the Compton effect, which is uh, radiation, gamma radiation scattering of other atoms, like such as in the detector. There are also so-called characteristic X-rays being emitted as radiation interacts with material in and around the detector. For example, there's a lot of lead X-rays as the detector is shielded with a lot of thick lead to prevent radiation, natural radiation from outside coming in to a large scale. So uh, don't take everything you see for granted. And we also get peaks from natural radiation, such as potassium, potassium-40, a natural radioisotope, which is always present in any rock or whatever you measure in a banana. There's always some potassium-40 in there. So, as I said, the only synthetic radioisotopes we encountered in this sample 
when measuring for 24 hours was cesium-134 and cesium-137. Here is the complete spectrum as taken during a 24 hours measurement of one of the 50 gram samples. On the top you can see the spectrum as a whole and on the bottom you can see our area of interest that has been marked on the top left. So the question was, is there any detectable amount of radioisotopes from Fukushima or in general nuclear incidents detectable in Tokyo? And the answer is clearly yes. This sample is from the Sagamihara area, I hope I said that right. It's just to the west of Tokyo at about 250 kilometers away from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. The identified synthetic isotopes are cesium-137 and cesium-134. As for the exact activity, it's currently hard to determine as we do not have the proper geometry calibration, but it is safe to assume that uh, this soil from the gutter of Tokyo streets contains radio cesium in the kilobicarels or multiple kilobicarels per kilogram range. As I said, it can be 50% off, but a 50 gram sample, as to our analysis, contains over 1 kilobicarel of radio cesium already. As for alpha or beta emitters, such as strontium-90, which is widely known to, cause, to have caused issues after the Chernobyl incident, uh, we cannot determine them unless they have gamma lines as well, unless those alpha and beta emitters have significant gamma emissions because as I said this is just a gamma spectrum we cannot see anything else but gamma radiation and ah, x-radiation of course as that is the same stuff basically but yeah as for the x-rays you can see them on the left there on the bottom left and as I said this is actually due to interaction of ionizing radiation with material in and around the detector so it's not additional radioisotopes in there, it's just interaction of radiation with matter. The other stuff you can see, for example uranium-235, is most likely a mistake. It has a very high uncertainty because you can see it's actually within a line of noise that comes from Compton scattering and stuff like that. So it is very very unlikely that there's a detectable peak from uranium-235 in there. And as for some of the other isotopes, like the beryllium-7 peak, is likely to be associated with cesium-134, uh, cesium I mean. And uh, some of the other isotopes are actually natural or from the lead shielding around the detector. And here we have the uh, middle bit of the spectrum. And you can actually see some more natural lines, but a lot of so cesium-134 lines. Cesium-134 has a lot of different uh, gamma lines, so we can see a lot of those. And you can also see the potassium-40 line, which is absolutely normal and will be in basically everything you analyze, even if it is just from the bricks that the place you have the, the gamma spectrometer in is made out of. So potassium is, is all around us and responsible for a large of large amount of the natural radioactivity that is within every human. Every human is radioactive with about uh, 8,000 bicarol. That goes for a standard human of 70 kilograms. Now this natural radioactivity and not due to anything man-made. And in the final area of the spectrum, on the very right here, on the very high energy range, the only thing significant and of actual relevance is another cesium-134 line. So what we're going to do next is get an actual proper geometry calibration so we can tell how much activity is within the samples to about 5% plus or minus. And uh, we're also going to try and get at least a reading of the beta activity of the samples as well as to determine if there's any strontium-90 in there. Not sure about alpha but we'll see We'll see what we can do, I suppose. So, what are you going to do about this if you're a resident of Tokyo? Or, in general, Japan, near the Fukushima area and 
do not live very far away, like very far in the south. Um, actually, I don't know. The thing is, uh, these activities are, well, not recommended to be around with. It is not recommended that you, for example, uh, play in this kind of soil or whatever. But then again, uh, it's it's not an acute danger to your health either. The thing is that cesium is actually um, chemically similar to potassium, so it has a quite large biological half-life. So it migrates to uh, muscle tissue and stays there for quite a while, giving you an increased exposure as opposed to as if it would just move through your body. So basically the thing is, uh, if this stuff is measurable in these amounts in 250 kilometers away from the nuclear power plant, then it's basically probably all over the place. The thing is that this sample was collected from a drain pipe, basically a gutter of uh, Tokyo, or more like just to the west of Tokyo. And uh, what I would personally do is uh, make sure I don't carry it into my house. So um, I'd probably put off the shoes that I wear on the street before entering my house. Uh, leave them outside just in case. Uh, make sure your children don't play in the dirt or, I don't know, in general, maybe not even on grass or playing in the woods or, I don't know. The thing is, I don't, I don't really have anything else to compare it to. I don't have samples of vegetation uh, such as for example grass or moss or whatever i don't know what the activities of those are but i heard that uh, beef and stuff was found to be highly contaminated in a lot of places in japan so well the thing is uh, it's of no use to break out in, in panic and it's not really possible to decontaminate such huge areas like diameters of, I don't know, 300 kilometers or whatever that are showing such increased amounts of cesium. So the only thing is to uh, try and pretend coming in contact with it and carrying it into your home. And that's all I can currently advise, really. Also, keep in mind that if you buy a Geiger counter, you can measure uh, soil that is contaminated like this. But if it's a minor contamination, like for example a cow just eating uh, grass and then it's, it's spread out like one kilobicarel is spread out in a whole kilogram of beef you will most likely not be able to measure anything with a typical Geiger counter you need a very sensitive device such as this device the high purity germanium detector for it so um, it is it is don't don't trust your Geiger counter in case you you try to measure food and it shows normal background radiation levels that doesn't mean that it is not contaminated with uh, levels of cesium that would pose damage to your health and would actually be advised against eating. So, yeah. It's not easy, I guess. If you want to know more, simply search my channel or my videos for Fukushima and you'll be able to find more info, which I put together at an earlier time. And of course I will keep you posted on any news I have, like if I receive new samples and have them measured, for example vegetation or food. And I will also keep you updated on any further me measurements such as the beta activity or accurate readings of the total activity of these samples. Stay tuned.